What's going on? It's Sook and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you what it was like to play over 20 games on the brand new M3 powered 15 inch MacBook Air. Also, we are 150 subscribers away from hitting that 5k mark. So if you are new around here and want to be one of the first 5,000 people to do so, then please hit that subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when any of my new videos go live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, I do want to quickly mention the spec for the MacBook Air, which I am testing in today's video. So this is the 15 inch MacBook Air with the M3 chip, which has an eight core CPU, a 10 core GPU, eight gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigabytes of SSD based storage. So you're probably wondering what games did I play on this MacBook Air? Now there was quite a list of games which I played on this MacBook. So book yourselves in. I played Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Minecraft, League of Legends, Grand Theft Auto 5, CSGO, Firewatch, Fortnite, Hitman 2, CSGO 2, Cyberpunk, Thief Simulator 2, Watch Dogs Legion, Halo, Overwatch 2, Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 4, Watch Dogs 2, Hogwarts Legacy, Spider-Man Remastered and Spider-Man Mars Morales, Far Cry 6, Saints Row, Borderlands 2, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, The Witcher 3, X-Plane 11, Portal 1 and Portal 2, Combat Master and Death Stranding. So in typical fashion, I started off playing these games at this MacBook Air's native resolution of 2880 by 1864. Now when playing these games, a few games would not load up at this resolution. These games included Hitman 2, Cyberpunk, Watch Dogs Legion, Overwatch 2, Watch Dogs 2, Hogwarts Legacy, both Spider-Man titles, Far Cry 6, The Witcher 3, along with Death Stranding. So be sure to subscribe as I am hoping to hit 10k by the end of this year and if you haven't done so be sure to go and follow me over on Instagram and X, I'll leave them linked down below in this video's description. The top 3 performing games were unsurprisingly native games available on macOS. These games were Minecraft, League of Legends and Fortnite, averaging 98, 93 and 62 frames per second respectively. I was quite shocked to see both of these Battlefield titles run at this resolution, as when playing these games with the 13 inch MacBook Air with its 8 core GPU, these games failed to run at even the 13 inches lower resolution. So perhaps those two additional graphics cores really are making all the difference. And sure, it was disappointing to see that other than CSGO, pretty much every other title was not able to get anywhere close to even averaging 60 frames per second. And with so many titles not running at this resolution, the only thing I could do was lower the resolution to see if we could get them to play. And so I did, lowering down to 2560 by 1600. Now when playing games at this resolution, we can see that Cyberpunk and Overwatch 2 finally run at this resolution. And we've still got the same top three performing games with League of Legends now taking the top spot, averaging 104 frames per second, followed up by Minecraft and Fortnite, averaging 92 and 73 frames per second. And we also have both CSGO games averaging above 60 frames per second, averaging 65 and 61 frames per second respectively. Hitman 2, both Watch Dogs games, Hogwarts Legacy, both Spider-Man games, Far Cry 6 and The Witcher 3 still would not run at this resolution. And to say I was disappointing that both Watch Dogs games along with both Spider-Man titles were not able to run at this resolution on this machine was an understatement. In order to get these games to run, I tried tinkering with the game files along with messing around with some of the settings in Crossover and I was still unable to get these games to run. And so if you are looking to play these titles, then the M3 chip is not the one for you. You will need to look for machines that come with either the M3 Pro or the M3 Max as the M3 on its own 
cannot run these titles. Or maybe it's able to run these titles, but it needs a bit more unified memory. So be sure to subscribe to stick around to see if that is the case. So with the performance of this MacBook Air being somewhat underwhelming, I decided to lower the resolution once again to 1920, but this time 1200, which is a full HD resolution at this aspect ratio. Now when playing games at this resolution, as expected, we still see the top three performing games are League of Legends, Minecraft, and Fortnite. It was good to see Hitman 2 finally running. Now when running Hitman 2 at 2560 by 1600, it managed to run for a few minutes before crashing. So it was unstable, so I did not include it on the chart. But when playing at 1920 by 1200, as you can see, it was able to average 33 frames per second. And sure, 33 frames per second is not great by any stretch of the imagination, but it was somewhat playable. And you've got to remember that this was being played through parallels on a machine that isn't designed for it, which hasn't got a fan inside of it so it's completely passively cooled as thin as it is with the battery life and screen that this macbook air has to offer another game which finally ran at this resolution was hogwarts legacy with it averaging 27 frames per second once again it's not that impressive but at the end of the day i'm still pleased to see this game running both watchdogs games as you can see failed to run and we still have csgo csgo 2 Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 4, along with Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Portal 1 and Portal 2 averaging above 60 frames per second. It was certainly nice to see. And I was still tinkering with the game files for Spider-Man and Far Cry 6 and they still were not loading at this resolution. Even when I went into Steam and tried to force it to this resolution, it just was not having it. So naturally I did the one thing which I pretty much do on all of these videos and that was lowering the resolution. Once again down to the standard HD resolution at this aspect ratio, that's 1200 by 800. Now when playing at this resolution, we don't see any changes with the games which ran all the same games ran at this resolution that ran at 1920 by 1200 however we now have league of legends minecraft and fortnite averaging above 100 frames per second and sure i wouldn't recommend playing any of these games at this resolution because to be honest with you they don't look great and the screen itself is capped to 60 hertz so you're probably going to be better off with some of these titles playing them at 2560 by 1600 but as you can see, GTA 5 averaged above 60 frames per second, which I wasn't really expecting, if I'm being honest with you. But to be honest with you, I probably should expect it because of how old the game is. But at the end of the day, it still averaged above 60 frames per second. Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4 also averaged above 60 frames per second. We also have games like CSGO, which averaged 90 frames per second, along with CSGO 2, which averaged 78 frames per second. There are also a handful of other games which averaged above 60 frames per second. These included Thief Simulator 2, Halo, Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 4, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and Portal 1 and 2. So to be brutally honest with you, if this is going to be a laptop that's going to be kept around the house and you know your kids are going to be using it quite a bit here and there, and they might be using it for games like Minecraft or Fortnite, then to be brutally honest with you, you're probably going to be okay with it. And of course, if you are looking to play some slightly more modern titles, even titles like Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 1. Hey Siri, when was Battlefield 5 the game released? Battlefield V was published the 20th of November, 2018. So Battlefield 5 was released in 2018, as you can hear. And considering that Battlefield 5 is a six year old game and it was barely averaging 25 frames per second at a full HD resolution, yeah, you probably don't want to be playing that game on a MacBook Air. But other first person shooters like CSGO and CSGO 2, you're going to have a fairly good experience playing those titles on this hardware. And then we've got games like Cyberpunk 2077. Hey Siri, when was Cyberpunk 2077 released? Cyberpunk 2077 was published the 10th of December, 2020. So as you can hear, Cyberpunk's what, a four-year-old title and it's barely averaging 25 frames per second at the same resolution. So yeah, whether it's Cyberpunk or Battlefield, you probably don't want to be playing those games on this machine. And as you've seen, both Watch Dogs titles and both Spider-Man titles were simply unable to run on this hardware. And if you are looking to play slightly older 32-bit titles like Portal 1 and Portal 2, you'll be able to do so with pretty much no issue. 
Both of those Portal games were quite enjoyable even on a MacBook Air. So there you have it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a MacBook Air. It's not a gaming machine. It's, for heaven's sake, it's not even got a fan inside of it. So you definitely know its main purpose is not to play games. Honestly, you definitely don't want to be doing half of the stuff that I've just done to a MacBook Air. But in a pinch, if you're adamant that you need to play a handful of titles, then yeah, feasibly, you could potentially do so. The biggest limiting factor that I've found with this MacBook Air is its 8GB of unified memory, as when it comes to playing games like Death Stranding at its native resolution, it simply did not have enough memory to be able to load in the textures, all of the graphics that it needed. Sure, lowering the resolution helped for a little, but then once playing it again and it had to load in further textures, it once again kept on crashing. My honest take on it is if you want to have a MacBook with the capabilities of feasibly being able to run a handful of gaming titles, purchase a MacBook Pro which has either an M3 Pro or an M3 Max chip in it. If you purchase a MacBook Pro with the M3 Max, then from experience, you're not really going to have much of an issue. I've heard many people say that 8GB of unified memory should be good enough for those that have machines with the M3 chip, but of course even if you are looking to play a handful of games, even native games like Death Stranding, then you are naturally going to run into issues, and these hardware limitations are most likely going to get worse as newer titles will undoubtedly demand more from the hardware. So there you have it, yeah, you can play games on a MacBook Air, but do you really want to play games on a MacBook Air? That's a question I'll answer another day. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so, click the bell to be notified when any of my new videos go live. If you've got any questions, hit me up on my social media, I'll leave them linked down below. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.